Hello and welcome back to Pillars. And we are at Tikawara, exploring the island. Uh, looking for some, uh, apparently some, some beasts that are terrorizing the locals, somewhat. The scent comes upon you gradually as you travel. It smells of the kitchens of Kadnua, of honey, cinnamon and fresh bread. Of meals shared with those now absent. Off the path you ca catch a glimmer of movement, something large and bulbous stirs beyond the trees. Approach openly. Near the center of a nearby clearing stands a Dalamgan, tending to a large spore. The Dalamgan seems uh, formed of the living tropics with vibrant flowers cresting her head. Her shape suggests that of an elf, replete with pointed ears. The Dalag and Dalamgan looks up as you enter the clearing, eyes widening slightly as she takes you in. She tenses, if wooden muscle can be said to do so, shifting her hands forward, uh, fingers bending into wicked claws. Like a club that knows no better, you tread where others fear. Her voice rumbles like a falling tree limp. Tell us why. What a fine lady you like yourself doing in a dark wood like this. A quiet droning like that of a beehive begins somewhere nearby. Do not trifle with us, kit. You're pretty damn demanding for a tree. Her head shifts very slightly like a tree in, a, in the breeze. Do you not demand answers for those who invade your home? <laughs> well, she is making some good point. Are you in trouble? Do you need help? She says nothing for a moment, her head tilting to the side. Why do you ask this? Do you think we fear the spore? She smiles and brushes her hand along one of the spore's frowns. We have nothing to fear here. Let's examine the spore. Uh, you'll do it. The bulbous fungus to towers taller than an almana. Its fleshy fronds hanging over its bulbous, bulging stalk. A miasma of yellow dust uh, hangs around it, gently stirring in the light breeze. A dank spore. You can barely make out the recumbent form of some unfortunate kit tangled in its roots. The essence of the, the spore sucks from its victim, glimmering along its length. If it notices you, it will likely attack, and inhaling the spores Clouding around it could confuse your senses. Back up, you yellow leaf bastard! I'll turn you into firewood! I don't have to do that. I can leave. Startled, her eyes widen as she takes a step back. With a last furtive glance at the spore, she turns and flees you. The dank spore begins to quiver as the forest comes alive. I'm gonna get interrupted. No. But if you have. Oh, she got interrupted. And now she lost the spell. Spore had the spell tome? That's a little bit unusual. You must gather your party before. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be so aggressive. 
<laughs> when it comes to these places. I can just leave. I guess that's an option. Uh, burial site. Some trees. Fresh fruits. Sure. This is a generic place as well. So that's a dead end. We have to go to the Boahika Pass. The rumbling reaches your ears first, a low growl from the land, before being pierced by the cry of a distant bird. The ground sets to vibrating beneath your feet. The, growing roar, the growing roar of the stampeding beasts echoes around you. You crest a rise to find that the stampede has passed, not only a rumbling cloud in the distance. As the dust settles, you note that a few of the poor remain fallen and still, with large feathered darts protruding from their fur. A single upright boar remains, a piglet that nudges its snout against one of the prone beasts. Approach openly. You pick your way down the rise and approach the down boars. They seem to be breeding, albeit shallowly. You're not sure how long they have before they meet the veal. Collect the baby boar. With a single swift motion, you scoop up the piglet, clamping your hand over its snout. Baby boar! Okay. Investigate your surroundings. Put the boars out of their misery. You spin on your heel at the sound of flapping feet and find yourself staring down a group of lagufat hunters with a Gurgled his they advance upon you. Lack of fat! No, my arch nemesis! Not these guys! Walking fish! Could you imagine that? That's it not too hard to imagine. Like somewhat like crocodiles, I guess. But they they also walk upright, so <laughs> not exactly the same. Just blow them up. Yeah, that's garbage. Alright, that looks good. Well, Lagafets are not the strongest. If you want loot, we need to kill people. Alright, there's no point exploring this uh, map, I suppose. This is just uh, purely for fighting. We can go down, check out the camp, doesn't really matter. Then, Hohina Ravine, which has uh, a lot of uh, Lagu Fats, I suppose. I'm kinda ready to kill them all! Maybe we can talk with them. Maybe they can work together with the locals. You know, the kind of exterminating them just feels a little bit um questionable. How intelligent they are. Oh, I guess maybe talking is not an option. Go fight. Is that some fishes? Sure. Yeah. Looks like more traps. Didn't work. Throw them all up. Mm 
Maya. What? You need an arrest right about now. No. Over there. How did you mess it up? Just disable the trap, okay? That's all we need. They're really trying to kill me. Awfully rude, I have to say. Come on, guys. Uh, I'm not exactly on your side, but... Got someone in my... What? The jungle lurker. Tail lighting is not exactly great, but it's safe to use. Got it. Leave it to me. What? You find an old stone coffer, pitted and mottled by long exposure to the elements. The lid is cracked, but thick woody vines, like giant's fingers, hold it in place. That's not how it looks like. It looks like a, a wooden chest that's reinforced, well, that has a metal frame. Which is sitting on a, a pile of gold. Burn the vines. Do it. Uh, the plants squeal and pop in the flames, giving off an odor that smells this concertingly like burning flesh. The bitter into scraggly blackened strands. Yet, no sooner have they shrunk than uh, they quiver and uh, twitch, beginning to fill with sap once more. You rip the lid from the coffer before they can regain their grip on it. You retrieve an antique bronze hatchet, pulling it from the coffer, even as the vines feebly grasp at it with hum hungry tendrils. Beyond set. Uh, crappy axe. That's good against plants. <laughs> I guess if we need to cut trees, we'll consider it. A large leg of fat, a broodmother by her size and crest, surfaces from the pool. Around her neck hangs a knotted cord strung with shiny odds and ends. She chirps softly. As you draw closer, she gurgles in agitation but does not attack. She dives back down and disappears. You hear splashing and chattering coming from further up the slope. Really? Usually this would be where they tear your throat out. Now you wanna talk? Cocking her head, the broodmother watches you and lets out an inquisitive chirrup. Chirrup at her. The broodmother stops gurgling and takes a tentative step closer, craning her neck with interest. Other lag of fat peer and chirrup at you. Yeah, because first contacts always tend to go well. Young lag of fat pokes its head from behind one of the adults and burbles happily. The adult ushers it back with a firm claw. It looks smaller than the hatchlings in the cage, but not by much. Oh, Anna. What? Juana. Oh, Juana. Who's Anna? Juana. Ru Juana? Snow, snows and gurgles rise in volume. The other lug of fat bared their teeth at the name. Oh, Anna. Yeah, we're not gonna have a very deep conversation with with only using Juana. The broodmother hisses. Her attending warriors brandy spears, clubs, and blowguns. Can't really blame them, can ya? You hate Juana? Hatchlings. What? Seraphim gapes, stiffens, and then blinks rapidly as if clearing his eyes. Yeah. The scaly lass spied the Juana rounding up her pups, marched them off towards the beach. 
Oh, condolences, ma'am. The Juana captured your young? You can understand me? Yes, I saw your hatchling caged in the village. She screeches with emotion, rocking her whole body back and forth. Her bristling fin flashes like a blade. The other Lagufet bared their teeth and even wider. Turning her attention from you to the formation of Lagufet, the broodmother hisses and flicks her tail, gesturing down toward the bottom of the ravine, toward the village. The others bob their heads in agreement. Oh, Anna. I can rescue your hatchlings, but your clan must stay away from the village. The broodmother chitters and blinks at you, tilting her head this way and that. At last, she raises her head and trails to the treetops. One by one, the other leg of fat lower their weapons and snap their jaws shut. Please, hatchlings. Oh, we gotta do it. Ah. Can we? Should we? I'll be stealing. I don't I don't know. I don't trust the Lagu Fat. You must gather your party before. So what? We get them there. Venturing forth. Uh hatchlings. And then what? They promise to leave them alone. Kuaru Hot Shrine. T Let's go with Tikawara. Still, we're gonna explore that option. After that, we probably just have to go to Nekataka and and tell them that we did them a really solid. We have to go to the Brass Citadel though. We can go and try to suck up to the Valians. I think that's just completely out of the question. Because they hate him way too much already. So we're gonna suck up to the Deadfire Company. And maybe that's gonna uh, encourage them <laughs> to actually allow us to buy from their stock. Do I need to wipe out the village? Because I don't hate these guys. Pakeho. You need something? I need to feed those lug of fat hatchlings. Are you crazy? Then him we he will go and blame me. You see the woman at the trading post? The angry one? She will have my corpse for bait if you do this. Why would you why would she blame you? She despises me. How could disaster not be my fault? Besides, the Ranga will bury her at high tide if she so much as insults you. Or any foreigner. At least go and see her before you release her prizes. Then Maybe I find some other place to be until her anger cools. Hey, Himuihi. For what do you linger here? We need to release the Lagu Fat hatchlings. Quiet. She throws back her head and laughs. <laughs> but you do not laugh. Then you do not joke. For what would I do this foolish thing? They have clans and families. What would you do if someone caged your children? A look of pain and surprise twinkles across her face. It reveals an old but raw wound to your shrewd gaze. Her expression hardens. Careful there, Cap. Slavery ain't no subject to be borden lightly. Then I never forgive them. We must destroy the Broodmother now, before she is bolder. That is true. Akeho? You need something? Can we just bust them out? Pekeho. My fingers be fat and stop furry. this. They will get away. Sure. Look out! They escape. For. Leaping from the water, the broodmother eagerly chirps and beckons toward her hatchlings. They rally around her with unbridled joy. She scans the beach, her bulbous eyes searching you out and finding nothing. 
giving up, she lops her necklace over her head and lays it down on the sand. Chirping and waving her chest, her crest, the broodmother and her hatchlings dive back into the ocean. I will not be the one to tell him we he. Didn't she throw down her necklace? Baubles of the fin? <laughs> okay. This is what you wanted, right? The fishermen say you released the Lago Fat. What madness possessed you? Well, unless we wipe them out completely. Uh, your best option. Well, if if I just kill those five Lago Fats, then all the Lago Fat will try to kill you, and you kill the Lago Fat, and you know you get my point. Assuming that those are the last five Lago Fat uh, that I just saw at the end, like yeah, I, I guess, like it might solve your problem, but that's probably not the case. And who knows? Working working together with the Lago Fat? Don't question me. At least I can look forward to killing them when they come back. And you, keep your webless hands off of what is not yours, Akira. Damn. I guess we didn't uh, really manage to help out the villagers, or they don't see it that way. It's fine. It's time to bail. I don't think we can return this quest. Tikiwara. I don't think so. Southwest. Kua Orikuhu. Uh, let's leave by sea. Southwest? No, 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 no. That's, that's where I got the mission, probably. It shows incorrectly. Unless there are aisles like that. Let's go toward Nekataka. I'm pretty sure that I, I was, I was fairly thorough. I like how I just destroy all the ships, kill everybody. That's one way to make sure that all bounties are, are progressing. Morale working with injury. What? Crack bone? Why are you guys injured? We can't put them in. <laughs> Let's see. So these are actually healed up. Sailor experience, 93. Really good cook, really good surgeon. I can just put her in as a surgeon. What Lucidius can be there. Sailor experience, 29. Uh, she's the best cook of all time. Unskilled cook. She can be the best cook. 70. For sailor experience, I guess you're just gonna sit out. And we're gonna take uh, Giorgio rat, uh, rat handed, who's gonna be a deck hand. Yeah. Does it even matter? Not really. Anyway, that seems correct. So let's just go into Nekataka. Now, how are we doing with the missions? Uh, we can't return to Martino. That doesn't work. Toko Kohara. So we need to go to the Brass Citadel. Uh, that is one thing we can do. Yeah, we gotta go to the Brass Citadel. That is... Anything northeast is not done. Northwest. Travel to the ruins. What? Hmm. Southeast. 
Return to Barati, return to Sansa. Oh, we can go back to the Sansa, the map guy. Okay, also we got a bounty that we can return at, uh, at the temple. If you want to do that. So... Or we just don't care about that. Let's just go to the Brass Citadel first. We gotta go inside the Brass Citadel. We can always just uh, return it a little bit later. That that works. Because these bounty missions are... Don't really have a lot of flavor. They're like, hey, kill people. They're named. You just kill everybody on the map you see. Well, if anything, I would put Bunty on my head, because I managed to disrupt the the operation of the Deathfire to, to, a, to such an extreme degree that there are no ships left in the entire Deathfire. I mean, that's gotta be a concern. If anything, I would put a Bunty on my head for that. I, uh... Thanks for taking me this far. Maya scratches the back of her head. This is where we part ways. For the moment. But I need you here! I won't be away too long. Take some leisure time if you have to. No! Asura will want me to report in alone. Sorry, it's, it's company business. But we are like a team! I might not be back for a few days on account of this. Maya chews the inside of her cheek and reaches into her pack. She produces a sealed missive. I'm supposed to handle this one alone. But we are a team. You're not just some dead fire spy slash uh, messenger slash muscle. You're part of my crew. So that is worth a lot more than whatever you got before. I won't ask you to come along or get involved. I'll go with you. We are bound. When I said I won't ask, what I mean is you aren't invited. This is a one woman, one bird kind of job. <laughs> I'm sure our pet Orlin can keep you entertained. Damn. You best be glad I'll be liking that bird, girl. Cause I ain't no powder monkey's flogging pet. Go have fun. Chase a god, save an island. Do what you do best, Captain. Come back with answers or not at all. Try and not get yourself killed. Give Atsuru my regards. Ah, oh, Damn. Okay, safe travels, Maya. You as well. Just don't have too much fun without us. She nods to you, holding your gaze for an extra moment before she clicks her tongue to summon Ishiza. Is she gonna come back soon? Because I, I made uh, her a core part of my party. I spent like so much money on pimping out her armor. I, well, I'm going to the Imperial Command anyway. Maybe we're gonna find her here. So, uh, okay, let's talk to the big boss, Azanui Karu. You look like you've come with a purpose. Apparently not. Apparently not. The skills and everything is set up in a way that we run with Maya. You must get. Damn. Actually, I'm not. I'm not terribly happy with the... Well, I think the skill system is rather cool. And as long as you go with like one standard part, it's, 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 it's really, really cool. But my, my only point is that it somewhat discourages switching out your companions. Because uh, I, I did try it out at one point, just, just, uh, just to see what the hell. And uh, the companions that are you're not running with are not only lower level, 
but also their skills are not gonna be set up that uh, optimally. So if you wanna have, uh, if you wanna like me max the support skills and the skills just to like for example like in in my team Maya has the survival, then you would need to replace Maya for someone who actually has survival. Anyway, Asura, let's talk. Clear skies. I don't want to talk about how different you seem from the Royal Deathfire Company. I've restored the Luminous Adra at Pokuhara. That explains the rumors the Valians are scaling up in Queen's birth. I'd hoped you would stop them. Um, now I have their trust. Imagine what I can do with that. Look at all they're accomplishing with animacy. I can't stop progress. They bring development and trade that will improve the lives of many. I don't work for you, Asura. My powers don't work that way. There's There was nothing I could do. Now I have the trust. Imagine what I can do with that. Quite a lot, I think. Nevertheless, I'm more interested in reports the storms around the islands have cleared. What do you know of this? He leans a little closer, his hands folded behind his back. There was a, a cloud of essence corrupting the Adra, clearing it ended the storms. Even if this isn't the outcome we'd wanted for Poco Kahara, your observation is infinitely more valuable. Take this, and remember it the next time we call on you. We'd long suspected something unnatural was behind the storms, but we had little evidence. Rautai plagued with terrible storms. You think there may be a connection? Yes. If the storms that assail Rautai have a similarly unnatural origin, then perhaps they too can be stopped. He looks back up at you, his eyes bright with... Purpose. And if that's the case, then there's more work to be done. Work that you might be able to help with. After all, if you're going to make friends in the dead fire, you might as well choose the ones with the biggest cannons. <laughs> right. In any case, Hazanui Karu has a matter that could use your help. Her office is on the main floor behind the large double doors. It's most conspicuous. Very well. Imperial commands. I guess if we didn't work for the Royal Dead Fire Company, then having Maya around would have been uh, a little bit more, a little bit more unusual. How's a new Karu? You want to talk to me? Finally. Asura tells me you tamed the storms of Poco Kohara. That is correct. You got more metal than I expected for someone who made a living off. Pictures and poems. Pfft, don't make fun of pictures and poems. Entertainment is a very uh, respectable profession, Azanui Karu, just so you know. She gazes out the windows behind her desk. Makes a person wonder what kind of secrets lie in Andra's mortar. I'd love to find out. Why do you say that? I I'd love to find out. That's the spirit. She claps you on the back, her wooden hand clopping against your shoulder. Rautai's storms have made us who we are as a nation. Hardy, driven, inventive. But they've also held us back. Forced our people to seek resources and livelihoods far from our homes and families. Imagine how much more we could achieve if we could control those storms. You think something in Andra's Mortal will help you with that? A grand and worth to go. And one that will improve the lives of many. The storms there cannot be natural. Not when they are so ferocious, so constant. And your exploits at Poco Kahara suggest that something else may be behind them. But enough of that for now. Atsura said you needed my help. There's an understatement. She knocks the bowl off her pipe against her wooden 
hands. The trouble in Hasango forced us to send additional ships back to Rawadai to make up for shortfalls. And storms at home have delayed another portion of our fleet. This leaves us short-handed here. Uh, so what are you asking of me? I got an expert crew and a ship that can handle anything out there. Exactly. I have no doubt. We're due to collect a special shipment for delivery to our port at Sayuko. We've contracted with a captain named Widla. A flicker of distaste passes across her face. Meet her, complete the trade, and take the cargo to Sayuko. Fleet Master Okaya is overseeing the development of some special projects there. I see. She takes a thoughtful draw on her pipe as she looks at you, seemingly deciding what to say. She's one of the brightest minds in Rawatai, and it shows. You two will get along. Most of her work is, or should be, under wraps for now. But perhaps she can give you a taste of what we have to offer. If it's important, I can handle it. What's next? <laughs> Whitler's agreed to meet our courier out at sea, away from the heaviest traffic. She gestures on her map, to, not to the open water west of Nekataka. This is her payment. We've already negotiated with her. Fleet Master Okaya will see to your compensation once you arrive with the cargo. This is the kind of job that's best completed quickly and quietly. I'm counting on your famous discretion. Famous discretion? Holy crap! Who the hell is telling that about me? Okay. I'm very- I'm rather stoic, apparently. Clear skies. Uh, calm seas. <sighs> wow, I'm known for my discretion. So bore Good me? Good to see you again. Can you sell me something? Of course. Now, where did I put that ledger? Yes, they like me. Girl of Mortal Protection. That's not bad. Boots of Stone. Meh. Ah, uh, seems like mostly garbage. The only thing that could potentially be considered interesting. Is this one. Crits converted to hits. Nah. Alright. Garbage. We're going away. So. We can return two missions. Last time I shipped out with some soft At once. I woke up in naught but a nightshirt. In an old full up of squid. That's nothing. Twice in one week, I woke up in a dug-up grave. Buck naked, coffin busted, no corpse to be found. And that was before the dream started. <laughs> <laughs> Only twice. And here I was thinking you were exciting. What the hell? Last exit. So. Wait, what? What do we have to do in Queen's, uh... Sansa, yeah, 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 that's what we wanna do. So, we're gonna go to Sansa's Mop Emporium, talk with Sansa, then get the hell out of there! You're traveling in the slums of Nekataka when the streets become suddenly barren. Hey, you wanna pick up me? We can still take you out. The cliffs high above, through the narrow alleys and tunnels of Nekataka, get those into darkness even in midday. The reek of rotten fruit mixes with the uh, noisome scent of dead fish, swaddling you along with a hundred other lesser filthy fragrances. Your footsteps echo in the darkness, piercing the otherwise silent slums. Quiet this thick ain't never a sign of a fortune capped. A seraphim nose twitches. <clears throat> you turn a corner and walk into a plaintive cry. Help! Miss Happen shadows mix with low hissing and the skittering claws of on filthy stone to resolve into a pack of scalder. Their glistening maws float in the 
black and cave grubs wriggle about their legs, mandibles snapping as if to mangle the air. On the far side of the creatures, a small girl, dressed in the rags of the Juana, grips a gleaming sword in both hands. She brandishes it wildly at the scolder, each swing of the blade releasing a howl that keeps the beasts at bay. The they creep over closer to her, however, and her eyes plead with your own. Please, leave the girl to her fate. Draw the beast's attention. Okay, they're coming to kill me. I wanna be on good terms with Nekataka when I kill the queen. Then I'm just gonna be like a hero that took the Neotas, saved everybody, then we're gonna kill Queen Bonkaza and they're gonna be like, what? But they're just gonna be okay with it. Because I'm such a cool guy. Uh oh. It's gotta be deadly. Who she is hurt, but she didn't run into the AOE. What happened? Oh, cave grub. We got an extra one. Quick, toss me something else. Sweet redemption. Did you heal her? There you have it. What does she has? That continues to deal damage to her. It's over now. Hey, Kusi, what's up? The girl painting, uh, panting before you, draped in a tattered Roparo robes, bears a few bruises and cuts, but looks otherwise unharmed. Beads of sweat commingle with trickling blood on her forehead. Finally relaxing, she lowers the sword she's been swinging, letting the ledge, uh, letting the edge uh, rest in the dirt. The pommel bears the form of a dog's head. Thanks, stranger. Don't think I could have made it without you. Kusi smiles, eyes gleaming in the gloom. You're lucky you're not dead. I know. But isn't that true of most folk who aren't dead? Yeah. Anyway, I think you should have this. For what you did, and for what you can do with it. She kneels, wipes the blood off uh, the blade, and slides it into the skin its scabbard before proffering it to you. Most Juana in the gullet don't have your grasp of Adiran. That's father's doing. He traveled all over and he insisted that I learn Adiran, Valian, and Rawatayan. I even know a few phrases in Anutanic. You should keep your sword. It would mean a lot to me if you took it. <laughs> Besides, it's a bit big for me. I should probably stick with daggers and the like. Thank you. Oh, you use this blade well. I don't know, seriously, you need it more than I do. <laughs> yeah! Well, I can hardly make you take it, can I? She chuckles and lowers the weapon to her side. I truly appreciate what you did. Not everyone in Nekataka steps in for a neighbor. I need to be getting back to mother, though. She grimaces down at once, uh, one of uh, the dead scolder. I probably shouldn't take home scolder meat, should I? Why not? I don't know, I can't take it for the children. I can't do it. We're going to Sansa's Mop Emporium anyway. She needs the weapon. I can't take it from the Roparu. I'm totally cool with taking it away from those who 
who have stuff. But come on. Her last sword? Probably it's a piece of crap anyway. Sansa? Welcome back, welcome back. It is a pleasure to see you once again. Tell me, how is the sailing? Smooth? Nothing to delay your expedition, I hope. No way. How might I assist you? I got some material for your book. I could not have hoped for a better partner in this endeavor. Your well-deserved pay, of course. Why stop here? We're making good headway, and you've certainly proven yourself. I'm sending you far out west this time. Past Port Maggi, <laughs> past the Wakara Reef, and even the Kangati Islands. Whoa! Nobody's been out that way in ages. All manner of dark stories. I'm sure you'll be fine. I'll be waiting. Didn't I check that out already? Welcome back, welcome back. How might I assist you? I got it. Wonderful, I can't wait to... Oh, is that a little fish man you've drawn? Yep. I had already set the coin aside for you. I knew you wouldn't let me down. We are getting into deeper water now, so to speak. We call the islands along the east of Magran's Teeth the Burning Shoals. All right. As you might imagine, it gets a little hot over there. Two of the islands haven't been surveyed yet. You'll want to sail northeast from the docks to reach the islands. I'll be waiting. Alright. I haven't been there, so. Okay, time to go northeast. <clears throat> where do we go after that that's a really good question i think is we don't have maya so i don't really know what to do right now should we just wait should we just keep waiting and wait for maya to show up or do we need to get one of the other companions bell ready that's not kind of how i want to go about it It's it's tough. I don't know. We need to go to the dock. Anyway, next time we're gonna head out. So thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time. Have a good one.